Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math questions out of this book here the official guide to the GRE, the revised general test. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 200 and actually the problem that we are about to solve is not on any page it's uh, something uh, that is extra, a bonus question if you like but the concept that we are dealing with is the concept of compound interest and you will find that concept being discussed on page number 232 today is our day number 114 let's, let's talk about compound interest and how does it differ from simple interest in a simple interest here is what happens okay? Let's talk about simple interest here. How does simple how does the concept of simple interest compare with the compound interest? Here's a question. The question is what is the amount of interest earned on one thousand dollars invested at four percent for three years? Now had it been a simple interest, what would happen is that we will earn four percent in one year. Therefore, 8% in 2 years will earn 12% in 3 years and we'll simply calculate the 12% of the amount that we are investing. So it's 12% 12 of $1,000 which is simply $120 and that will be the end of the story. Compound interest is a little bit more complicated. What happens in the compound interest is that at the end of each period, now notice how I phrase the statement at the end of each period. I did not say at the end of each year. It could be a period of, it could be a period of one month, it could be a period of one quarter, it could be a period of every six months, it could be a period of quarter, it could be a period of every week or every hour or every day. It could be any period. At the end of each period, you earn a certain amount of interest. That interest, listen carefully, that interest at the end of that period, at the end of first period, the amount of interest that you earn, you do not withdraw it, it stays, it stays in the account and that interest becomes part of your total balance and you start out your next year, your second year or second period, whatever the period happens to be you start out your second period with the amount that you originally invested plus the interest that you earned at the end of the first period and you start out your, your beginning of your second period is the original amount plus the interest that you earned at the end of the first period and at the end of second period, you're given interest, you earn interest on not only your original amount that you invested, but also the interest that you earn at the end of the first period. Hence, the compounding. Let's do the example and you will understand what I mean here. Okay, one more time. I'm going to say it one more time. Say, see if it makes any sense. Let's, let's take a simple example. Let's say... Well, right, we talk about this example here. Instead of taking a simple example, this is a single, simple example. The question here is, the question here is, we are investing $1,000 at 4% for 3 years. And it is being compounded annually. So at the end of first year, at the end of first year, we are going to earn 4% of $1,000. 1% of $10,000 is $10. 4%, 4% of $1,000 is $40. Now what's going to happen is that, at the end of the first year, the bank is going to pay us, bank is going to put $40 in our account. We're going to start our second year, at the beginning of the second year, the money that is sitting in our account is not $1,000 anymore, it's $1,040. At the end of the second year, the bank is going to pay us 4%, not on the original $1,000 that we invested, but on $1,040. Whatever the 4% of $1,040 happens to be, that interest at the end of the second year will again be added to our amount that we had at the beginning of the second year. And then again at the end of the third year, in, a, in, es in essence what it is is, in compound, interest, in, in compound interest what's going on in essence is that we earn interest on interest. We are paid interest on the interest that we earn. And that's called compounding. Let's do this problem. For example, here, at the end of the first year, for example, here, 
at the end of the first year we get forty dollars in interest Why $40? Because that's the 4% of $1,000. We get $40 in interest. 4% of $1,000. We start our second year. We start our second year. With $1,040. At the end of second year, At the end of second year, bank will pay us bank will pay us four percent of now here's here's the prickly part. At the end of the second year, the bank will pay us another four percent, not of the original one thousand dollars that we invested, but one thousand and forty dollars that we started our second year with. Voila. So now we have to figure out what is 4% of 1040. Let's do it in the top. I need the room. Let's do it on the top. Or maybe we can continue here. 1% of 1040 is ten dollars and forty cents. Ten dollars and forty cents is one percent. Therefore, 4% of 1040 is going to be 4 times $10.40, which is well, 40 cents times 4 is $1.60, and 4 times 10 is 40. 40 plus $1.60 is $41.60. This is the amount of interest that we earned at the end of the second year. Notice, notice at the end of the second year, we did not earn at the end of the first year. At the end of the first year, we earn forty dollars in interest. At the end of the first year, at the end of the first year, at the end of the second year, we did not earn. We did not earn forty dollars in interest. We earn forty-one dollars and sixty cents. That's because we are earning four percent interest on the forty dollars that we earned at the end of the first year. We are getting interest on interest. We're getting four percent of forty dollars. Four percent of forty dollars is your dollar dollar sixty there. So now we're going to start our third year. Let's see what we're going to start our third year with. This is where we have to pay attention. We start our third year. We're going to continue from here. We pick, we pick up from here. We start our third year with the amount that we had in the bank at the end of the second year, which was ten dollars and which was one thousand forty dollars. Sorry, at the end of the first year, the amount that we had at the end of the first year, which was one thousand and forty dollars, plus the amount of interest that we earned at the end of the second year, which is forty one dollars and sixty cents. This is the amount. This is the amount that we start our third year with. We start our third year with $1,081.60. We do not start our third year with $1,080. It's not 4% plus 4%. It's been compounded. Let's see what happens at the end of the third year. Again, I need the room, so I need to raise some of it. At the end of third year, At the end of third year, we earn four percent of one thousand eighty-one dollars and 
60 cents. Whatever the 4% of 1,000, 1,000, $81.60 happens to be. Let's calculate it, should, shall we? 1% of $1,081.60 is very easy. To figure out 1%, you just take this amount and move it to the, you move the decimal place it by two, two spaces to figure out the 1%, which is very easy, which is $10, as you can see, $10 and 81 point, ten dollars and eighty one and six tenths of a cent. We're just going to round it up to eighty two cents. And since we are rounding it up, I have to put here approximately. Therefore, four percent will be four times this amount. I need the room, so we have to get rid of all of this thing. You already have it. Four percent of this amount, which is this. Again, four times ten. Four times ten is forty. Whatever eighty-two times four happens to be, that's that's what the amount is going to be. Let's do it here. Eighty-two times four. Eight and thirty-two. So it's going to be. Forty-three dollars and twenty-eight cents. At the end of the third year, at the end of the third year, at the end of the third year, we will earn, we will earn forty-three dollars and twenty-eight cents. And therefore, final amount that we will have is, final amount that we will have is, we will end up with total of. We will have the amount that we started our with the amount we started out our second year with. We started out our sorry, the amount that we started our third year with, which is ten eighty one sixty. Ten eighty one sixty, and the amount of interest that we earn at the end of the third year for a grand total of. One thousand one hundred and twenty-four dollars and eighty-eight cents. Now here's the here's a scenario of the simple interest. In the case of simple interest, we will earn one hundred and twenty dollars in interest plus the amount that we started out with our or our principal amount at the end of third year here at the end of third year we will have $1,000 that we originally invested plus $120 for a grand total of $1,120 in the case of simple interest. This is the simple interest. I shouldn't put my caps away like this so cavalierly because now I don't know where I put the bloody thing and I can't carry it because I'm going to I don't know where the hell the bloody thing went. So, at the end of at the, at the end of third year, in the case of simple interest, and in, in the case of simple interest, we end up with one thousand one hundred and twenty dollars. In the case of compound interest, in the case of compound interest, we get four dollars and eighty eight cents extra. And that's because of compounding. This four dollars and eighty-eight cents that we get, four dollars and eighty-eight cents extra that we're getting, in this scenario, is because of the fact that interest is earning interest because of compounding. And that is the difference. That is the difference in the concept of simple interest and compound interest. Now, having said all this thing, listen carefully. Having said all this thing, over the years that I've been teaching prep courses for the GRE, and I've had some experience. I've been at it since 1989. Very, very rarely you see a question on the GRE dealing with actual compound interest problem. And because of the fact that these days the exam is computer adaptive, it adapts to your skill, 
unless unless you're going to score in the 700s and above most likely you will not see any problem dealing with compound interest so don't fret too much about it don't worry too much about it just understand the basic concept and that's it this is the basic concept that's it compound interest simply means that your interest earns interest your interest at the end of the first year or first period starts to earn interest at the beginning of the second year or second second period whatever the period happens to be that's all I will see you tomorrow where I will solve the two problems that they give you in the book. I have to solve them because they are there. I can't just skip them. But like I said, I wouldn't worry too much about them. We'll solve problem number 2.7.8 that you see on page number 233. And then we'll do problem 2.7.9 on the same page. And that will be the end of that part. That will be the end of the algebra section. And then on the bottom of page 233 we'll start the geometry portion. Which is a very important segment of the exam. So that's the goal. In about two days time uh, we'll, we'll begin the geometry. Okay? I'll see you, I'll see you tomorrow on day number 115. Bye now.